the solidarity. I didn't tell you that uh, tonight that I was the commander of our first military training camp inside South Africa. And I read to them from Jean-Paul Sartre's The Wall about the Spanish Civil War and the need to be true and not betray your comrades and how a man is tortured almost to death and betrays his comrade, betrays his hiding place and the Franco-fascists go and find him in his crypt in the cemetery and torture him to death, and, or torture him and then shoot him at the wall. And the one who's been tortured breaks down into insanity when they tell him, thanks for giving up your comrade. Why did I read this story to young men who want to be soldiers fighting the heroic struggle? Because I wanted them to know that we're part of a historic long struggle of people all over the world. And the people are going to die. An armed struggle is not an easy thing, it's not romantic. And to rub it in, I taught them first aid from the Red Cross handbooks and so on. Why? Because when you fight a war, people are going to be injured and people are going to die and you better know how to deal with it. And if your mate is wounded, do you stop fighting or do you wait till you've destroyed the enemy before you treat your comrade who you might die in the meantime? There's a nice ethical question of soldiering. And I just wanted young people to think about it. That's all. And then I read to them from Che Guevara's Guerrilla Warfare. It wasn't exactly a parallel, but it was a book about a people's war. You cannot fight a guerrilla war against a powerful state with its powerful allies unless you involve the mass of the people. And you use simple methods appropriate to your situation. And we talked about the Algerian struggle and Vietnam. And of course my favourite subject, because I learnt it early in life, the Spanish Civil War. We're part of a worldwide struggle against oppression where the oppressors unite and combine and they don't care how long it takes, my friend from Mozambique, how long it took to overthrow the Frelimo government and, and to weaken it, of how long it takes to overthrow governments 70 years in the Soviet Union and to force it into positions where it fails its own tests of morality. You don't act on your own, you act in a world and you act in a world of very powerful forces. There's no doubt in my mind that the Palestinian people need a bipartisan approach in the United States where the role of Israel as the ally of the United States becomes a non-issue between the two leading parties. That would put an end to it very quickly. The people would be free to vote the way they want to vote. The fight goes on everywhere simultaneously and you have to deal with it all. You can't say, damn them, we should have done this. We don't control everything, unfortunately. And as I say, endurance, clarity of vision, an ideal of what our world should look like, and hatred and bitterness destroys us, not the enemy. We won. How can I be bitter? I took up arms against the government and didn't expect to survive. I'm a very fortunate man. I took part in the struggle. I've been loved, I have loved, I still love, and I enjoy people. What more can you ask for in life? Except that my country is not totally free, but we're working at it.